For so many years, I have dreamed of having a real live donkey at our church's Christmas pageant service. We came close a couple of times, but perhaps wiser voices always intervened and reminded us that donkeys tend to be stubborn animals, and there was usually a story or two of a sit-down strike halfway up the aisle on Christmas Eve, leaving Mary to make her own way up to the front. And there was always a reminder that animal stage fright is not always a pleasant thing to behold. So this year, I decided to go to the donkey. And that made real sense because obviously, God thinks that stables are sacred spaces. Hello there, donkey. You can actually feel holiness around here. The light is softer, the smells earthier, the sounds more gentle. And here is my donkey. It's a good place to do some serious pondering. It's an opportunity to think about the journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Now, the Bible doesn't actually talk about a donkey, but I can't imagine an eight-month pregnant Mary making that journey on her own. Oh, I know Joseph was there to offer encouragement, like, breathe, honey, just breathe, but it was the donkey that did the heavy lifting. So, if you were to ask me what role I might want to play in this year's Christmas pageant, I can imagine myself choosing to be the donkey. It is so ordinary, so practical, so everyday, just moving things forward one step at a time, slowly trying to do my bit in the world. I sometimes wonder if that's what all of us humans are called to be and to do, to use our brains and our back to help a, a neighbor in need. For that first donkey, it was Mary, feeling so awkward, poor, tired, overwhelmed. For us now, not Mary literally, but anyone who needs our help. And as we care and as we carry, we may find that actually we're doing it for the Christ child, even though we may not see him, even if he is, so to speak, and wound. Now, I have a real fondness for the Christmas carol written by Robert Davis called The Friendly Beasts. It's rooted in the legend that all the animals were given the gift of speech on Christmas Eve, as if they too were caught up in the wonder and the mystery of the time. All my relations, really, now, many, many years ago, at a long ago school Christmas concert, I was invited to sing verse two as a solo. I won't inflict singing upon you, but the words have stayed with me. I said the donkey, all shaggy and brown, I carried his mother to Bethlehem town. I carried her safely up and down. I said the donkey, all shaggy and brown. The song continues and talks about the cow with her milk, the sheep with their wool, the doves with their cooing, as if every living thing had deep within it a desire to give, a call to a generosity of spirit. I think that's also true for us humans, that we were born to share, to give, to love. We often forget it, and yet it takes moments of grace, like Christmas at its best, to remind us who we really are. Now, if you were wondering about how you might carry your burden, the hopes and the joys of the world, and if you were wondering about how you might give in this Christmas season, you might want to take a look at the United Church Gifts with Vision catalog. No donkeys, but stories about children, teens, families, women, the homeless, refugees. So many opportunities for each of us to support the work and the caring and the helping to be in partnership with people right across Canada and around the world. I heard a story from last Christmas about a family that wanted to do its Christmas giving in a different way. 
The, the kids were a little bit older, so that made it easier, but when they sat down and thought about gifts, they realized they had everything. There was nothing they actually needed. And so instead of the usual pile of Christmas presents under the tree, they decided to go with stockings. And when they woke up on Christmas morning, each person's stocking had a few small personal items. It also had uh, one of these catalogs accompanied by a note saying, you have $200 to spend on projects, gifts with vision. So after breakfast, they gathered together as a family. They read through this catalog. They learned so much about what's happening for other people in other parts of the country and the world. And then they decided where to give. This is an idea that my family is going to be thinking about and pursuing in this coming Christmas season. So here we are, stable, donkey, some sheep, background noise, and yet still a Christmas dream. So may your season of celebration, this season of love and of giving and of carrying the burdens and the joys, may it be a blessing for you. Amen.